It's now 2 p.m. and time for another context switch, in this case, code reviews. As a lead developer, this can sometimes become an overwhelming responsibility. That is checking out the code that other people write. And so we have these code review sessions. I prefer when acting in a lead capacity to call these peer reviews. Even if the lead writes code, someone else should take a look at it and review it. But there are several ground rules that need to be taken into account before launching into code reviews. The first one is no formatting. That's because we want humans to focus on the stuff humans are good at, logic, purpose, reasoning, and we can use computers to focus on what they're good at. In this case, every language imaginable has a tool, usually known as a linter, that's capable of formatting the code automatically for you. There's no need to spend 15 minutes arguing about tabs for spaces. We have a linter, it's automatically hooked up, it's gonna format the code for us. So we don't have to focus on that. Similar with linters, we have common issues. There are also tools called static code analysis tools, which will look in code for common bugs and common issues. A try-catch without an exception that does anything, for example. So this allows us to have to not focus on those tiny little details that the computer can handle for us so we can focus on the bigger picture. Then we have what I call the no broken code review. Because we're following CI practices, anytime we make a code change, it's being validated by a central authority. And if you've broken something, you have 15 minutes to either fix it or revert it and try again. And the reason is broken code's relevant. It's sometimes hard to understand that if someone, let's say, spends, I spent 15 days working on this code and it's broken, I'm sorry, as soon as that code was broken, you really should have stopped working and fixed it and got it in a working state. Because the problem with building on top of broken code is that you're guessing. You have no idea that it actually works. And so it's very important to recognize when something is broken, the most immediate thing to do is to fix it, whether it means actually correcting it or just rolling it back and starting that piece over. The last thing we want to do is to spend a significant amount of time in code that doesn't actually work or do anything. And the final most important part is no ego. Uh, code reviews aren't about junior versus senior. They're about getting another set of eyes on work because consider the primary function of code is to work. The secondary function is that somebody else has to understand it. So we wanna make sure that the code we're writing makes sense and somebody else can maintain it and use it. We don't want someone to have to come in and make a trivial change and then say, oops, I gotta spend the next month reverse engineering and making sense out of this. We want all these tools and all these checks and all these things we've built in this process to allow us to focus on making the code readable and understandable. So now it's time to start the code review session. At the moment, it's just me and Dev2, and we're looking over their changes. Usually if I don't have the context, meaning we didn't just talk about it at the stand-up several hours ago, I'd say bring up the story in the work tracking system and let's look at it. Because I have the context though, I have a good idea of what needed to be done. In this case, it's changing out REST template for a new library like OKHTTP. So when we get started, where do we start? The place I like to go is I say, show me the test. So Dev2 brings up the integration test where this is the integration test for get price, this is the one for get image, and then for get in stock. And so then I ask, well, why these three integration tests? And their reply is, well, in doing the research, I looked into all the places that were using the URL utility, and it was these three services that were used by these three controllers, where in most RESTful technology stacks, you have this controller service type pattern in place. And so in this case, the three controllers, one for price, one for image, one for get in stock. So it makes sense why the basis for what's being tested is for price image in stock. So we take a look at the at the test, get a good sense for how this works end to end. Then we're gonna take and look at some of the underlying code implementation. A lot of this stuff I like to do beforehand, not to have to go through every single line of code. But at the end of the day, I judge code by its unit and integration test. It looks good, so we're good to go. A lot of cases though, if this didn't go so well, Let's say I asked, show me the test and there are no tests. I'd go, well, I'm not gonna review untested code, so let's show some tests. 
But take into account, too, because of the CICD practices we have in place, you wouldn't be able to get code to commit and work if it didn't have the appropriate test coverage. So that's unlikely to be the case in this environment. Another potential would be if, well, I changed these things, I'm just not sure why, we would have together have drawn that diagram saying, let's figure out the relationships between what we're changing. The real important part of the code review is, does somebody else understand it? They can read it, they can comprehend it, we're good to go. So in this case, for the Devon question, they weren't entirely confident with the work they were doing, so they were doing it in their own branch. Or another way to think of that is, they were doing their work outside of the main code base. And so now, since we've looked at it, we both agree that it's good and it works, together we're gonna go ahead and have them merge that code into the main code base. Because we're following those CI and CD practices, the code is merged in, it kicks off a pipeline, which goes through the check, the test, and the build, and then initiates that deployment to dev, in which I can see inside my chat in the lower right, that this is all happening in real time. Now that it's been deployed, the next question is, how do you demonstrate that it's done? And so I asked Dev2 to bring up the application's open API page or Swagger page, or you could also use Postman or any other RESTful tool, and demonstrate how to invoke the endpoints and see that they work end-to-end -end with the new mechanism for REST communication. The developer is able to do that, so we're confident that what's been deployed works and we can go ahead and move it all the way to production. However, also consider before moving it to production, there's a larger series of concerns. This is impacting potentially a lot of different aspects of the system. So we rely on the fact that we have something known as a regression testing suite. This is something that a long time ago used to be done by human beings, but in the days of more robust automation tools, we're able to emulate user behavior in order to have a pretend user drive the system in all sorts of different ways to give us more confidence that an individual change doesn't break anything. And so we launched this regression testing pipeline just as an extra set of tests to make sure that this new change that was made that changes a lot of stuff still works across the system, across all different sorts of use cases. Some we may not even have thought of.